Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our new review of The Bachelorette, where I feel like we're starting to kind of move in a direction that feels like The Bachelorette and less like whatever that was with Claire. Yes, we are. There was, like, genuine, like, kind of normal dates for this show. Like, I think there's a couple of people we probably really come out of this episode liking and rooting for. Wait a for. second, you don't think that that whole therapy date was normal? Listen, I that that <laughs> Poor was... Jason, oh my goodness. Never before have I seen the Bachelorette producer snatch a soul from someone's body <laughs> like they did Jason <laughs> on that know. day. They just like emotionally put him through, I don't know, like spin cycle. He was just never able to recover. No, I felt so bad for him. Can somebody, like I'm sure we'll talk more about this <laughs> later, but... Can somebody make sure Jason has enough time to feel better and then get him a plane ticket to paradise so that Jason can find the right person when he's actually in a proper headspace? I just want a Jason update that he is okay. Yeah, really. I mean, I felt so bad for him. This is a weird, there's still a lot of weirdness here. We'll talk about some of it, but I guess before we get into it, though, if you guys do enjoy this video, subscribe. Don't miss any other updates we've got on The Bachelorette. Yeah, we've been having a really fun time this season talking about the show, so the best way to make sure you don't miss our videos is to be subscribed to the channel. Okay, so I'm going to start with a little bone that I have to pick with producers. Just a little bone. <laughs> Just a little bone. Okay. And it's more about the story that they've been trying to tell, where they have included the health crisis in this whole thing, because this is a reality TV, right? Yeah. So they're like, okay... Everybody's had to be quarantined. We're going to show everybody getting the tests up the nose and everything. Yeah. And then Tasha comes in and is like, if you told me a week ago that I'd be doing Bachelorette, <laughs> I would have been like, no way. I'm like, are you kidding me? You were in quarantine a week ago. You knew. And I love her. But I feel like production needs to like pick a lane. Either we're pretending she wasn't in quarantine and we're pretending that none of this is happening or we're all in on it. Maybe they just told Tasha that she was going to the greatest party ever and because she had been in lockdown for so long, she's like, well, this is better than being locked down. I'll quarantine just for a party. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe, but I will say I am so thrilled that Tasha is a bachelorette. And I was really excited for, for Claire. I'm excited that she's found somebody. But man, her energy, Tasha's energy, when she just came in and you saw all the guys like mouths drop, everyone was so excited for her to be there. And she just has so much charisma. I was just like smiling too. <laughs> Since you mentioned Claire, and we will do our best to not talk about Claire for a good chunk of this video, but... Oh, come on. Could you guys not have put this at the beginning of the episode? <laughs> Could you not have just not put it in at all? Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean to Claire, but I don't think we actually learned any relevant new information throughout any of this, because it's like, they already asked Claire if she had talked to Dale before it started. What, is Chris Harrison gonna come on next episode and be like, okay, Claire, I need you to sign this contract in blood that you did not speak? It's like, we, we get it already. Listen, I was glad that it was there. I love love, I'm a sucker for love. So the two of them being together, I want that after the final rose. I wanna know that they're still doing okay. And I don't want that to happen at the end of Tasha's journey. Like, this is now her time. So it was very weird to like, all right, we're getting into the new stuff here and everything's happening. And then we got that promo of like, here's what's coming up on Tasha's season. And then all of a sudden it was Claire. I was like, what is happening here? Like they really needed to switch this around and not low winter sun the situation <laughs> here where they're trying to like jam it in between like Breaking Bad and you know, the Breaking Bad after show. This, if you guys want good updates on Claire and Dale, <laughs> Instagram. They're they're on Instagram. I I want I will say this and I am not even I'm not even joking here. Dale had an Instagram video today where he called Claire Crawls. Like that was a oh. nickname and I actually kind of felt like that was adorable and I'm not even the biggest Claire fan after this season. But I was like, 
I would just rather watch Dale and Claire on Instagram than watch this, like, five-minute nonsense interview. I was okay with it. I wanted the update. I got my update. I just wanted it at the beginning of the show. Okay, well, we'll, we'll transition over to Tasha because I think we... The sky's open tonight and we realized there was actually a lot of men who were on this season that were not Dale, who were actually kind of interesting. Yeah, I'm like, here's Jordan, here's Ivan, like, here's all these guys that are just getting no time. Brandon, like, there's all these guys that had, like, no time. And now all of a sudden I'm like, wow, there's a lot of, like, cool, interesting, fun guys here that throughout all of Claire's episodes we heard nothing about. It was it was really remarkable in that way, wasn't it? It was like, oh yeah, there's actually a lot of just fascinating people here. Yeah. I, like, and we've talked a little bit about Riley. We've talked about a couple of our other favorites here and there. A certain Andy Bernard wannabe, if you will. Yes, Bennett. I feel like Bennett actually didn't get that much airtime tonight, which is kind of surprising. No, he didn't. But man, the look on his face when Tasha came in was like Santa Claus just walked <laughs> through the door and he was having the best day of his life. This was a very good day for Bennett. Other than when he got accepted into the Ivy League, which I am pretty sure was the best day of Bennett's life. That's from Bennett himself. But. Well, this wouldn't be, of course, The Bachelorette if they weren't going to throw in more drama. So they brought in four new guys and some of them I was like, okay. And then some of them I was like, I don't know, man. Like, and Spencer came in and just wrecked the house. The house just like collapsed on itself for no real reason, except that he like got the first impression rose and he's remarkably good looking that all of a sudden everyone's like, that Spencer man, I hate that guy. He's the worst guy ever. Here's this is my <laughs> prediction on all of this. I think producers they had they were watching all the footage and they were like, these guys like each other too much. Hey, here's this guy we rejected from coming on the season at first. Let's throw yeah. him on. He's gonna be a firecracker. Yeah, it was that everyone's getting along too well, and if you know this is. The Bachelorette. So while I love love, I also love drama. And there wasn't going to be a lot of drama of everybody's like, all right, guys, we're all in it together sort of thing. That just wasn't going to come. So now enter Spencer, who is really focused on, like, winning and getting that objective done and all these other kind of weird things. Like, this is like a competition. And I get that it is sort of a competition but it's not really i mean this is about love right you you're not necessarily competing against other guys you're kind of just competing against yourself like is there compatibility he his head was too caught up in this flash ball which by the way that is called water basketball i have never i i have played this before not once have i ever been like let's go play splash ball folks did you ever wear a Speedo and have a Speedo cam? Because I could do without the Speedo cam. I'm really over <laughs> this sort of gratuitous stuff that's going on the show. And I'm fully aware that that is like normal. But then there was like a preview for next week and she's like oiling them up with a brush. I'm just like, okay, we get it. Everybody's got abs. Now we have a Speedo cam. Like we really needed this. Let me say this. I, and I, maybe I'm not a good... Speedo Okay, yeah, that, that, that does not make it better. <laughs> like, okay, I... No, nothing makes it better. I could be wrong, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Does anyone look good in a Speedo? Because I'm pretty sure nobody looks good in a Speedo. I don't think so. Unless you are like Michael Phelps, and you are like an Olympic swimmer, and somehow this makes you more like buoyant and capable of swimming <laughs> fast, which I don't even know if that's true. I'm pretty sure it's been said at some point. Like, you do not need to be wearing these. And we do not need a cam to watch everybody bouncing around under the water. No. You know, that's, that's enough of no. that. No. <laughs> it was weird. It was unneeded. There are things on this show sometimes that are unneeded. I think we can all say that in agreement at yes. this particular point. But this splash ball, as they like to call it, it, did bring up a little sort of rivalry here now that we have with my man Riley. 
And Spencer, this new kid that's come in. Like, okay, I figured out Spencer's role here, and I, I say this as a big basketball fan. There's one player on every team who is basically the enforcer. We have went over this on Dancing with the Stars that yes. Charles Oakley, his entire job sometimes is just to go in and just rough some people up. This was ultimately, I, I think Spencer's secret plan here was that he wanted to try to incite a fight, get some people thrown off on the other team. Like, he was... The, Spencer was there to be nothing other than just like the goon in the game who was just going to cause problems. Riley is going nowhere. Riley, you I saw in the promo for the whole season he's getting a kiss, so he's <laughs> still sticking around. I love how like they try to be like so averse to spoilers with this show, and yet in the promos they like spoil a good like fifty percent of the season right? themselves. <laughs> it's like, oh, here is insert contestant here at a point which makes it seem like they're really <laughs> far in the show. Yep. I don't. I really. I don't understand a lot of that, but yeah, I'm going to enjoy hating Spencer for the next couple <laughs> of weeks. It's like they sort of showed like this Noah dude who's got like some weird mustache thing going on in the promo. Yeah, that mustache. I'm. I'm no, I'm not into a guy with a mustache. So that was a bit, str it's just always very strange to see guys who just have a mustache these days. Cause it was such a big thing in like the seventies. And then it just like disappeared. And now I guess it's making a comeback or just with Noah. Okay. So I have mustaches. Like eh, eh, let um me know. I'm bald, so I'm going to turn into Mike Herman Trout from Breaking Bad for a minute here and proclaim no half measures on mustaches. You either go all out and you get, like, the curly Wild West mustache <laughs> or you have no mustache. He was, like, doing something, like, weird in the middle thing. I'm not about it. I don't think anyone cares about this other than me. But you know what? We're 11 minutes into this video. We're talking mustaches. That's right. Okay, I'm done talking mustaches. <laughs> All right, so as we said, Spencer got the first impression rose, so that has caused a little bit of friction. We saw that Easy got a group date rose, so she is sort of spreading it around. I kind of like the move that she did before giving the group date rose because she was sort of like, she was like sort of setting people up and then like taking it away. She was like, oh, I really like that you did this and I really like that you did this. If I was one of the guys and then she gave the rose to somebody else, I would be, like, swearing under my breath, like, nobody's business. I thought it was such a smooth move <laughs> that she made because she, I'm sure she knows that these guys were all sort of felt jerked around by Claire, that they had no chance, they all felt, you know, listless and restless and upset and mad and feeling like they weren't getting proper attention. So for her to actually take a minute and be like, you know what, I only have this one rose, but I do want to point out you, you, and you, and you, because you guys all brought me this, 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 and that. I was like, that is a really smart way to go about it, to make sure that it's like, okay, maybe I didn't get the rose, but she really liked that I did ABC, and that's cool. She called it out. It was really cool. I liked it. I think Tasha's really good. Oh, like, she's so good. Yeah, like she's done. She's very. I, I think she's very good at explaining what she wants. She's very good at giving guys opportunities. I think she had some funny moments in here. I, I think production. Okay, the there are two moments in this episode I find kind of funny. Number one was Tasha trying to explain what being an influencer is when describing her job without actually saying <laughs> <Yes>. influencer. <laughs> what do you do? Well, I travel a lot for work. And I'm in debut. It's like, it's okay to, you know, half of Bachelor Nation is our influencer station. It's, it's okay absolutely. to just say that. It is absolutely okay to say that. It is a real job. It is a job that is very lucrative. And yes, lots of people are in that job. So I think it's all right to say it. But I get why she feels like there's some sort of stigma against it. And there really isn't. There shouldn't be. No, I, I especially because she's actually successful about it. If she was like, I have like 10,000 followers and I'm like making up my own like endorsement for myself, <laughs> that is something to be a little bit more embarrassed about. Yeah. But my favorite moment of this entire episode and I... For, I know where you're going with this. We have waited. I, I forget how long The Bachelor as a franchise has been on. It's been almost a couple of decades. But we have yeah. waited for that long for Chris Harrison to actually, you know, get off his butt from playing golf in the middle of all the episodes and do some real work. He put in some effort in this date with Brendan, like, running around the entire result. This, 
This is what I want from you, Chris Harrison. Oh, it was really funny. I really enjoyed that. I like that he had that little electric scooter getting from place to place. Coconuts, the ice cream, but, the, all of it. It was great. I, this is what I'm really wondering. It's tinfoil hat time here. But I, because remember in the first night, Chris Harrison interrupted the two of them. Yes. Did Chris Harrison know at that time that Brendan was getting the one-on-one -on -one date next and he was setting himself up for a bit? Because I'll admit, I was kind of caught off guard when Chris Harrison interrupted Brendan. I was like, since when does Chris Harrison ever interrupt the guy while they're having a conversation like that? Yeah, and the fact that Brendan was talking about it sort of in the diary room, we'll call the diary room or his confessional or whatever, yeah. it tells me that then production probably went back and told Chris and was like, yeah, he was, like, really excited that he was going to finally, you know, get some real time with her because you interrupted their other date, and he was just like, <laughs> He grew the full mustache That's that I've been right. demanding in that very get moment. Get me the scooter. <laughs> that is the first time that the words, get me the scooter, have ever been said in a diabolical way. But it works. The Bachelorette is a pseudo-universe. Anything <laughs> applies here. That's right. But this, okay, let's thumbs up or thumbs down on the idea of riding horses in 120 degree weather being a very good date. Because it feels like it would just be very sweaty and uncomfortable. They had hats. They had Chris Harrison giving them ice creams and giving them like cold coconuts. Like, you know, I feel like thumbs up. I thought that was pretty all right. I think they, they were, there's not a lot you can do in the resort besides have dinner in a little corner over and over again or go to the pool. Like they really don't have a lot of options. So to see that, I thought that was really cool. It's social distance. They get to be on the horses. They get to do something a little bit different. I thought it was good. Thumbs up. All right, you, you've kind of talked me into it. And plus, I've also remembered that earlier this season, they had a date where they literally threw stuff at a rock and then set something on fire. So this... Yeah, yeah, I think it's just a hard to be creative in this situation. So I was happy to see that, especially just as a TV viewer, because I don't want to just watch them having dinner in different little corners of this resort. Like, and I, I've appreciate the pool thing but you know it's been a lot of pool i'll say one more thing on jason just because i reminded myself oh, of it with jason. the date i really think he he came across like such a stand-up guy in this episode where i feel like a lot of people would have been like you know i'm gonna fake it for a couple more weeks and get some more fame out of this or whatever else and he was just like no i'm gonna go to her i'm gonna be blunt i'm gonna be honest I'm going to explain where I am, and then I'm going to peace out. Like, I, I honestly feel, and I don't say this often, I honestly feel like he was there for the right reasons. He came across so genuine, like really genuine. I mean, even to the rest of the guys and they're, that they're actually sitting around talking about him being like, oh man, we're all really worried about Jason. Then Jason comes in, they're like, oh, we were just talking about you. Like, we're really, you know, concerned about you and how you're doing like that he just is such a genuine guy like and that conversation he had with Tasha was great because he did put it all out there where he was just like I really wanted to get you know past what I had with Claire and I just can't and I know that Tasha doesn't know like this therapy date that this guy was put on but I mean it's good that he was able to sort of express you know that it's it really doesn't have anything to do with her and it really has to do with Claire and what was going on there. Because that day was really weird and intense, especially for a guy like Jason who doesn't open up. Like, that was really intense. Congratulations, producers. You broke Jason. You took Jason away from <laughs> us. I hope you're happy because now we don't have him and now we have Spencer instead who's just going to go and commit, like, flagrant fouls on people in the middle of a basketball game because there's no ref to send the other team to the free throw line. Thanks. Well, Riley's there to keep everyone in line. <sighs> okay, I, I do... I'm enjoying the Tasha part of the show right now. I am enjoying it immensely. I'm so happy she's the Bachelorette. I like a lot of the guys. I'm excited to see where things are going. But of course, yeah. we got to know from you guys. What did you think about this episode? Who, who are you rooting for the most among the dudes? What did you think about these dates? 
Let us know in the comments, and if you do like this video, subscribe for more updates, give us a like, and if you do want to support us more, check those links. We have the store, also our Patreon, and we will see you here next time.